Hello, my name's David, and in this video, we're going to create a watercolor effect and we're going to give it a little bit of a twist. More on that later. The image I've selected, I was using my stock tab. I'm on Pixabay. I put in the search word of boats, scroll down a little way. This is the image, dragging it out into the workspace. Now there's the photographer. Now, if you use the image, don't forget to give them credit. This is the image size, which is perhaps a little bit big. So the first thing we need to do is head to the layers panel. We're now going to go to document, resize document. And for the width, I'm just going to highlight it. And I'm going to type in 3000, just press enter or return because the two are linked. The height automatically adjusts, leaving the DPI on 72. Let's duplicate the background layer, command J, control J. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a little bit of space. So that spacebar, now I'm going to press Alt or Option to so hold down spacebar, hold down Alt or Option, click down, you reverse out. Press V on the keyboard will give you the move tool from the toolbox. Bottom center grab handle. I'm going to press and hold down command or control. I want to make it look less photographic. So just give it a little bit of a tweak. Or if you want to be adventurous, give it a bit more of a tweak. I'm going to take it into this sort of area, something like that. Right, that will do nicely. Next, press C on the keyboard. That's going to give you the crop tool. Back to that center bottom grab handle. Press, hold down command or control, pull it out roughly to the same sort of area that you had your move tool, double click in and you can see there it is. Press C on the keyboard once again, will give you the crop tool. Once again, heading down to that center bottom grab handle, which has proved been rather useful. Press and hold down command or control, top and bottom are coming in equally as they went out equally as well. Just taking it to that area, double click in to apply. Command zero, control zero. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our background layer. Command J, control J getting a bit confusing, all backgrounds. So we're going to start to rename them, calling this one what it's about to become, which is inverted. Now to invert it, we're going to change it to a color negative. Very simple. Command I, Control I will do that. There's our color negative, our inverted layer. To the blend modes, changing it to color dodge. Let's head down to a live filter. And the live filter we're going to use is going to be Gaussian Blur. Now it's attached itself as a child to our inverted layer, which is exactly what we want. Now don't leave it unfolded. Just make sure it is folded up like this. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Taking the radius across, I'm going to go all the way to 100. But I need to go further. Just highlight it. I'm going to type in, I'm going to take it to 200. That looks pretty good. Always used Preserve Alpha, but notice how it fades off the edges. So I'm going to leave it unticked for this particular image. Click in to accept it. We're now going to head back down to Live Filter and we're going to go up to Median Blur. This has gone in on its own layer. And this is the reason why I said not to unfold the Gaussian Blur, because if you did, that would go in as a child as well. We need it to be on its own layer. Right, taking this up, going to move the slider. You can see the paint of the effect starting to appear, taking it into there. 19 pixels looks pretty good. Preserve Alpha doesn't do a huge amount, so I'm going to leave it unticked. Click to accept it. Right, switching these layers off, I'm going to come to the background layer here. In fact, I'm going to double click. Let's give it a name, calling it FX. But for now, with this layer, I'm going to head to Window. We're going to go down to Library. Now, I am going to use a little bit of a shortcut. I've recorded the sketch effect, saved it as a macro, and I have done a video on this, which I did a little while ago, but I will put a link in the description. I'm taking this shortcut because it is 13 steps, and it would make this video way too long. But once you click on it, how quick and easy is that? There's our sketch effect. Let's come up to the hamburger, top of the library. We're going to go to close. 
Now before you do anything else, just take a look. Is that sketch effect enough? I think it probably is. I could take it a little bit further and you can use the slider, but the smallest of adjustments is taking it all the way to 16 pixels. It's gonna highlight it. I'm gonna put in two. Much better to enter the figures manually. Just take it up stage by stage. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna click apply. There's our sketch layer. Let's lift it up. Let's put it top of the layer stack, giving it a name, calling it what it is, which is a sketch. Right, switching these layers on. So turning on the visibility, we're on the sketch layer, changing it to multiply. Nearly missed it. That looks pretty good like that. Okay, let's head down to effects. We're now gonna go back down to live filter and we're gonna head up to liquify. We're in the liquify persona. Just in case you wonder, every tool is called liquify, push forward tool, liquify, push left tool, liquify, twirl tool. Right, so no mistaking. Now the one I really like is this one here, the liquify turbulence tool. Zooming in, command one, control one. The reason I like it so much is if you click down, you can see the way the paint comes over the edge. Going over it a few times gives that really nice sort of look to it. Again, this is where the mesh, you can see how that's been disturbed as we go over it. And this is, there it is, just giving that bit of a hand painted look. Don't forget to go over the top as well. There, so it looks a little less perfect. Just going over here, you can see the way you can take and just move those around a touch or two. Incidentally, if you go too mad, you can always head up to the liquify reconstruct tool. If I just click down, you can see the way it takes it back to normal. So don't worry if you do it and then look back a little bit later and think that's too much. You can always come and change it. Just taking it here, just up over the jetty and the boats, just for a bit of a wobbly effect. Command zero, control zero, but you can take it a stage further. For example, you can head up to the liquify push left tool. Let's just make this bigger, right hand square bracket. You'll see it altering over here as well on the size. And you can, that's not left, that's up. You can move it there, that's all right. More right than it is left. And you can sort of move things around a little bit as well. Something like this. You can move them as much as you want. You can create quite a surreal look. Now, for example, you could go to the, uh, there it is, the twirl. I did say we could give this image a bit of a twist. There, that looks good. Dropping the size of the brush down, particularly over those roller shutters, something like that will do nicely. I'm gonna click on done and we go straight back to the photo persona. Don't forget, it's a live filter. You can always come back, you can always change and adjust it. Now looking at the lines of the sketch, a little bit too perfect. So heading to the sketch layer, down to live filter, guess where we're going? Yes, we're going straight back to liquify. I'm going to go to the turbulence tool, taking the brush up in size. Let's just click down. I'm just going to go over this just to make those lines a little less as if they've been drawn in by a ruler. You can see the way we can just break them up a little bit like this. Well, not break them up, but sort of twist them up a little bit and zoom in right in. Command one, control one over the roller shutters in particular, dropping the size of the brush down, just to give those a little bit of a, a twist there as well. A bit more of a hand drawn look. If you've got any lettering, any text in your image, just reduce the size of the brush down, go over it, and there it is, just squirrel it up a little bit. Don't forget, if you go over something and you don't like it, that reconstruct tool is always there. You can come to that and you can make changes with that, right? For anything with a straight line, that'll do. Command zero, control zero, heading up to done, back to the photo persona. While we're on the sketch layer, let's take the opacity down to zero. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer without the sketch or with the sketch? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna drop it down. I'm gonna slowly dial it in. Perhaps something like that. There, that looks pretty good. Let's leave it like that. Right, going back down to the effects layer. To bring through a little bit more color, 
I'm going to head down to an adjustment layer. I'm going to come up top three here, the levels, white balance, HSL, use any of these. I'm going to go with white balance. It goes in on its own layer. Now it's not the sliders we're interested in. It's purely the blend modes. And as you bring it over the blend modes, you can see there's the color coming through. Color burn, linear burn, they look pretty good. Coming down, just go over them, select one that works with your image. Overlay looks good. I like these as well, but the pink is missing a little bit. I'm going to come back up. Let's go with um, this one here, a bit strong. I think you'll agree. So dropping it down, slowly dialing it in. And the reason I like this is I just like the way we get that patchy look to it. Again, trying to go for that painterly look and make the paintwork look a little less solid. So just taking it to that region there, looks good. Right, top layer. We're gonna head up to File. I'm gonna come down to Place. Now navigate your way to where you store your textures. Mine happen to be in a folder called Texture. Some of these textures I've downloaded, others are photographs I've taken, for example, this one here. These are all photographs as well. You can also find them using your stock tab. Pixabay, Pexels, just put in the word uh, concrete, uh, plaster, I think, with this one. I can't find a link to it, but I've got a feeling I put in the word plaster with this. If you pull it out, that's the sort of effect. Paper is also a good search word. Pull in this out. It's just that little bit of texture I want. And changing the blend mode to multiply, we can see through it. Zoom in to 100%, Command 1, Control 1. Going to the opacity slider, all the way down to zero, slowly dialing it in. And as you dial it in, probably round about this area here, I just want that little bit of texture coming through. You can see that sketch effect as well. Yeah, I think I'll leave it like that for the moment. Command zero, control zero. Looking pretty good so far. One finishing touch we can apply. Top layer, we're gonna head down to add pixel layer, calling it what it's about to become, which is our frame, our border. Press B on the keyboard is going to give you the brush tool. Heading over to colors, make sure you got the default color, any other color, D on the keyboard, make sure white is the foreground color. I'm not going to use a round brush from the basic, instead I'm gonna head down to, let's go to oils. My favorite has got to be this one here, the fine fiber. 72 pixels, bit small, right hand square bracket, will make it larger in size, and you can see there it is with white as the foreground color. There's our frame, our border, just coming over the edges. If you have given it that surreal look, this will help just to fill in, you see a little white spot down the bottom, it will help to fill in any little bits and pieces. There's two little boats here trying to get in on the action as well, so we can cover those up, no need to have cropped anything out. And you can just wave it around a little bit. For example, taking it in on that doorway, back out again, in for that window and round here. You can make it as uneven as you like, just over that aerial like this. And there it is. Once you've done it, drag it below the texture layer. That way the texture comes through that frame, through that border. There it is. So go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. And if you click that little bell icon, you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.